hey guys welcome to another tutorial in today's video we're going to be making this design so if you want to see how i made this please stick around guys so here i'm starting off with my basic bodice block which i've also connected into a dress block by just extending the measurement on the hip down to the bottom on the cf and on the cb and also on the sides to get the full length of the dress, I'm going to measure from the neck point down to the bottom of the paper. Next, I'm going to deduct this measurement from the actual full length measurement. Now, in this case, the full length was 65 inches. The length of the paper was 45 inches. So I deducted 45 inches from 65, which gave me 20 inches. Now, from the waistline. On the side of the front, I'm going to go ahead and measure my knee level. Now here I use 20 inches. Usually this is where I go ahead and shape the knee out, which is just basically make it a pencil dress. And next I'm going to extend that measurement to the back and also to the front and just label that part knee line. Now to shape out the knee, I'm going to measure on the sides one and a quarter inch. And then on the CB, I'm going to use one and a half inch. Next, I'm going to connect from the hip line to that new point and then down to the bottom, like so. Now, on the back part of the bodice, I'm going to go ahead and measure the shoulder. In this case, the shoulder was 13 cm, which was about 5 and a quarter inch. Next, I'm going to bring down the armhole of the front and the back as well. Also, confirm the shoulder for the front. Next, I'm going to redraw the new armhole. And basically the excess on the shoulder is the data allowance which i don't need so i'll just take that out next i'm going to mark the shoulder width on the back part of the pattern which in this case was one and a half inch now to get the back depth i'm going to measure on the cb nine and a half inch then on the armhole i'm going to measure six inches and then connect the new neckline because this is an open back corset, I'm going to go ahead and measure the width of the opening. So on the CB, on the waistline, I'm going to measure one and a half inch. Then on the neckline, I'm going to measure four inches. So the opening on the back also extends slightly below the waistline. So I measured about three inches below the waistline. And next, I just connected to those new points. So I wanted the back part of the pattern to have an inner corset. So to get the length of that, I measured on the side of the back, two and a half inch, then one inch below the back depth on the CB, and then I just connect it like so. So here I'm just going to label this part inner corset line, which I'll trace out on a different paper. Next, I'm going to connect the shoulder onto the neckline. Now, this part will be done with two. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and label what part I'll be cutting on the lace and then what part I'll be cutting with two and so on. Now, moving on to the front, I'm going to measure the underbust length. In this case, the underbust was 16 inches, which is about 41 cm. So I had to minus 2 cm, which gave us 39 cm. Now, please note that this measurement is not constant for everybody. So basically, you would use your own underbust measurement to get this point. I'm going to rule a short line across. Next, I'm going to mark my point X, which is the fullest part of my bust, and then connect my shoulder darts to the waist dart. On the underbust, I'm going to take two CM both ways for the underbust shaping. To snatch the waist, I'm going to take three inches for both the front and the back. Now this was about 8 cm, so I'm going to go ahead and split that in 4 cm on the back and 4 cm on the front. Next I'm going to split that 4 cm on the front into 2 because remember there's another side of the front. So I'm just measuring 1 cm on each side of the dart. Then on the back I'm also going to divide that 4 cm into 2. So here I'm just going to take that 2 cm all on the waistline on the side. So next, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a new side seam, like so. Now on the front, I'm just going to go ahead and mark my new dot points. And also draw out the bust curve. Now to draw the cups, I'm going to use the corset pattern method. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description. 
so first i'm going to mark out the seam allowance on the side which was one inch now from that one inch i'm going to mark 3.5 cm which is about one and a half inch so one and a half inch is the distance from the side to where the cup starts now in centimeters it should be between 3.5 cm to 5 cm max now 5 cm should be used for the smallest bust size 4 cm for medium bust size and 3.5 for larger sizes now to draw the back waistline, I'm going to measure 1 inch on the side of the front, then 4 inches on the CF line. Next, I'm going to close the waist start and draw my back waistline using my French curve, like so. So I wanted the mesh corset to be at the same level as the inner corset of the back so what i did was take the same measurement that i measured from the waistline on the back which is two and a half inch i measured on the side and then towards the cf i extended with one and a half inch and then i connected so this is where the mesh corset will end as well so basically the mesh corset would extend about one and a half inch below the back's waistline so here I just liberated front corset length. Now to draw the cups, I'm going to measure the depth of the neckline on the CF. So basically I'm measuring from the base of the neckline. I'm going to use seven inches. Now from this point, I'm going to mark half an inch, which would be the gap between the cups. Now moving on to the cups, always remember to use the deepest part of your curve when you're drawing this part now once i finish drawing the shape of the cups i always like to close the dots together just to see how rounded it is so when you do it this way if your curves is a little bit off you can like readjust and you know make sure you get the perfect curve and make sure the curves connect so before I complete the neckline I'm going to cut out my pattern first so that I'll be able to fold my dots easily. So starting on the back first I'm going to trace out the inner corset part. So here I'm just basically after tracing it out I'm just marking out the details on a separate paper. So once that is all marked now I can go ahead and cut out the back like separate the pieces. So here I separated it at the waistline so you can see me placing the inner corset to check. I'm also going to do the same to the front. So I'm going to trace from the under boss to the second line that is marked in pencil below the back switch line. That's because I wanted the um, mesh to extend below the back switch line with about one and a half inch. So here I just outlined it once I finished tracing and cut it out. So once I've traced out my extra pieces, I'm just going to go ahead and separate my pattern through the actual back switch line and close out the dot and before i finally draw out the neckline for the cups i just want to take a moment to say thank you to all my subscribers my new subscribers and those who always comes back to watch my videos thank you guys so much and if you're watching and you haven't subscribed please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to turn your notification bell so that you don't miss a video from me thank you guys so much now moving on, I'm going to go ahead and fold the shoulder that's on the front. Now to draw the neckline, I'm going to measure on the side of the armhole about 5 inches. Next, I'm going to draw the neckline from that point to the center gap of the cups, like so. Now to tighten the chest area, I'm going to use 1cm boat waist on the side of the shoulder dot. So here I didn't shape it as much as I would to a regular corset pattern. That's because this design does have a sleeve. So once it does have a sleeve, you don't want to shape the chest too much. Otherwise it becomes too tight when the sleeve goes in. So next I'm just going to connect from that point to the fullest part of the bust, which is the point X. And then I'm going to close the dot again. Then I'll now draw the final neckline. So here I'm just basically remarking those lines with the marker. 
so it appears more clearly. Next on the shoulder, I'm going to mark one and a half inch, which was the same width as the shoulder, and then draw it onto the neckline and then connect like so. So on the back part, I'm just going to go ahead and separate the neckline. And on the front, I'm going to go ahead and cut my cups out like so. So here is what my pieces are looking like so far. Now this part that is co um, cut out with the brown paper will be the mesh corset part. And then on the back side as well, the brown paper part will be the inner corset. So here I'm just going to further label the parts that I'm going to cut on lace, the part that I'm going to cut on two, so that I know where and how to place and cut each of my patterns. Now one trick that I use to stabilize the mesh that I use, especially when making nude and mesh corsets, is to use a super strong mesh. Now usually you could use a ganza in place of this, but I do have this mesh that I got off AliExpress. So first I go with a layer of the super hard mesh, and then I place my actual mesh, maybe say three layers, two layers, based on how much it blends with the skin tone. So here I've gone ahead to prepare my cups, I've molded them out and this is what it's looking like. It's always the best option to have your own cups made because the ready-made cups will never take the shape of the neckline of your pattern. So here for the layers of my mesh, I went ahead to use one layer of the strong mesh and then three layers of the actual skin tone mesh that I intended to use. Now you can, like I said, you can go as many layers as you want but once you get that skin tone match you know you know where to start so these three layers i used gave the perfect match for my client's skin tone you guys are going to see later in the video what it looked like so at this point i've pretty much cut out all my pattern pieces the back the cups the mesh um the bottom part i think and i've gone ahead to put a layer of interfacing i use the weft interfacing which is the same as the regular hair stay as some people know it so here i'm just basically pinning out my fabric pieces to get it ready for sewing so for the lace part of the fabric i cut out a satin and then a lining so basically these are what the back pieces looks like so the part that is the lining is the inner corset, which is the same one on the brown paper. So here I'm just going to pin everything in place and then head over to my sewing machine to just join them. So for the mesh, I've gone ahead to join that seam with half an inch, but I let my seam to face the right side instead of the wrong side. Also, I've gone ahead to join the fabric for the cups using half an inch and this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and cover the cups with the fabric like so and just pin in place. So on the mesh part, I'm just going to go ahead and mark my casing lines. So these are the points where I'll be placing my casing and then later I insert my boning into the casing. So next I'm going to trim off the seam allowance on the mesh part. I'm going to leave about quarter inch because I want the casing to be able to cover that seam that I left. So this is what my casing looks like. So basically I'm just going to pin in place and just take it to the sewing machine, sew it out. So 
so here i'm pretty much done with the casing on the mesh next i'm just going to stitch the cups to the fabric just to hold it in place like so so once that is done the next thing to do is to face the cups with the lining so before i do that i'm going to attach the strap or the front shoulder towards the side you know just like the way it was in the pattern next i'm going to just place my lining over it pin it in place and then just basically sew with half inch after sewing i'm just going to go ahead and top stitch that seam that i just did now after the top stitch i'm just going to go ahead and give that a good press which i did off camera so this is what it's looking like so next i'm going to go ahead and face the center gap of the corset so i basically just cut a strip of fabric from the hard mesh to do that and i did it like so now when i was facing this i skipped the middle parts um, of where my bone casing was so here i'm just going to put the bone in so that you see what i meant because i wanted the bone in to reach all the way to the top without any seam stopping it so yes you make sure you skip the center part of that bone in and next i'm just going to pin my cups right in place around the under bust like so Now once it's all pinned in place, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch that down with half an inch. So here I've gone ahead to attach both cups, you know, joining around the underboss with half an inch after pinning. And next, um, I used the same fabric, which is the strong mesh, to just cover the seams around the cups. Now at this point, my bonings were already set and ready. So all I had to do was just insert them. So here I'm just melting the edges um, before inserting them. So basically that's what I did. And here's what it's looking like so far with the mesh in place. And you can see I'm just tugging on it to just show you how strong and sturdy it is. It won't stretch on the skin whatsoever. So next, I'm just going to tape the bottom part of the corset with a bias fabric. So I basically just made it about three inches wide so I can like do like a double fold like so. So basically, I just folded my bias towards the inside of the fabric, which is the wrong side of the fabric. And then I sewed from the top. Now once that was all done, the next thing to do is to attach the skirt part of the dress to the mesh part. So remember how we left um, one and a half inch on the length of the corset. So here I'm just marking out that one and a half inch and I'm going to place the skirt part over this line to join it with half an inch. So the skirt part of the fabric was already lined with satin so i'm just going to go ahead and add another layer of lining to it pin it in place and then just basically stitch it down to make one piece now once stitched in place i'm just going to go ahead and place the skirt part over the corset part like so with right sides facing each pin in place making sure it's laying over that one and a half inch mark yes so i'm pinning it exactly on the one and a half inch mark like so
now once all pinned out just go ahead and stitch that with half an inch just right around here like so so this is what it looks like after i stitched it down and i've already given it a good press and that's what it looks like on the inside this Now here's what it looks like from the back as well. Now for the ruche detail around the back's waistline, so I basically just cut out a big piece of tool. I just made sure it was wide enough to give enough ruching. So basically, I just freestyled, um, ruched it in the center, also pinned it in place in the center, and then ruched it towards the side. Basically, I just freestyled it. So here is what it looks like now, and here is what it looks like done. Now moving on to the back part of the dress. So here I'm just pinning the lining in place. This is what the lining part of the dress looks like. So I've gone ahead to pin out the top part lining which will be the inner corset. So here's what the actual um, back part of the dress is like. And here's the bottom part which will be attached to the top part. Next I'm just going to go ahead and sew out all my dots. So here all the dots are already done, the skirt part of the dress and as well as the top part of the dress. Next I'm going to pin those two pieces like so, that's the top and the bottom and then join it with half an inch. So here I've joined it and I've ironed it out, giving it a good press, also with the, um, the lining part, which is where the boning will be on. So before I go ahead and face it like so, I'm going to um, add the boning to the inner corset. So here I'm just marking out the lines where I want my boning to be on. So I'm just going to trim off um, the seam allowance a little, leaving about quarter of an inch for the seam on this line. So here I've gone ahead to cut my bone in based on the length of the inner corset, making sure there's half inch left on top and also at the bottom. You see how I marked it. So I've gone ahead to also tape the edges with an insulating seam tape. So now I'm just going to stitch the bone in on the back part of the dress, the inner corset part, like so. So I used as much bony as I could because, you know, the size was pretty small, so I didn't have to use so much. Next, I'm going to attach the lining of the bottom to the inner corset, like so, and just stitch that down with half an inch. Now once that is stitched, I'll just go ahead and iron that out, give it a good press. Now the back part of the dress had loops instead of grommets, I wanted to use loops. So to make my loops, I'm going to just basically cut out um, several pieces of bias fabric. I used 3cm as the width and I just made several and then I just cut it out like so.
To get slim and sturdy loops, you want to sew right in the center of the bias. Now this way, whatever excess um, that is left as the seam is going to serve as a filling in between the loops. So it just gives it a little bit of structure. So to turn the bias, I always use a loop turner. First, I make a little notch at the top edge of the bias. Next, I put in my loop turner through the, the hole and then clip it in through that notch and then just turn it up like so. So here I've already cut out the length of my loops. I've marked the sizing and the spacing in between. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the loops down. Next I'm going to attach the strap of the back which was on, I cut on a tool fabric. Once I pin out a place then I'm going to face it with the lining part of the back. Like so. Give it a top stitch. Now to face the open back area I'm just going to turn the lining over the loops like so. And then just stitch that down with half an inch also pin in place first and stitch it down with half an inch like so now after stitching i'm just going to go ahead and reduce the seam allowance sometimes i like to notch sometimes i like to reduce the seam allowance to about a quarter of an inch so here after doing that Give it a little notch and then i'm just going to go ahead and top stitch as well so here's what it looks like after next i'm going to do a bigger top stitch which i'll later use as a bone casing so i'm going to pass a bone in through that um, new top stitch so once I've passed the boning in, I'm going to go ahead and seal it in right there. So this is what the back part looks like. I've gone ahead also to install my zipper and this is what it's looking like so far. The loops is in, the corset is in. Next is to attach the front sides together. So to finish the sides, I'm just going to lay the front part of the dress over the back part with right sides facing each and then i'm going to pin in place all the way to the bottom and then basically just sew out with one inch now also i'm just going to join the shoulder by just putting the two in between the shoulder seam and joining with half an inch so here's what it's looking like before fitting so i made her do a fitting before i installed the sleeve but this was where I was able to record up to i couldn't record any further because of time but i think i've shown you guys the major details on this dress here's her on fitting day this is what it looked like i think we ended up um taking the waist in a little because she wanted it more snatched but guys look at how the mesh blends with her skin like you can hardly tell it looks like her second skin so yeah this is what it looks like before the sleeves was installed and also i really love the fit of the cups i think it was just right for her so this is it guys let me know what you think in the comments like what was your favorite part of this video and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and if you've subscribed thank you for subscribing thank you guys for always coming back to check my videos out i love you all and i'll see you in my next video bye guys